So we're listening to and looking at this piece, Venetian Games of Lutoslavsky, written in 1960, because it's the very first piece in which he attempted to use an element of chance, something he became famous for. This technique called, in fancy terms, limited aleatorism just means a little degree of chance that somehow brings the music to life rhythmically. He used to say that um, he was trying to give back to the players their expressive role in the music rather than being little machines, you know, obeying a composer who was a too strict taskmaster. So we begin this uh, Venetian games with a kind of forest of birds all singing at once, seven woodwind players, but we have principal flute and principal clarinet uh, here to sample what these might sound like if they were solo birds. So, uh, Sam, would you mind playing your first phrase? Immediately we see this, there's nothing random about this music at all. That's a, that's a melodic phrase, right? That's a, that's a motivic thing. Um, do you mind playing the whole passage and we'll hear these various ideas put together? Thank you. You're not improvising at all, right? You're playing what's written? Exactly what's written. But how is it different from normal orchestral playing? Oh, well, I suppose I don't have someone going like this to me the whole time, so I can make my breaths as long or... In fact, you'll have somebody going like this and then just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it's very comfortable to play when it's like that. And you're able to stretch and, and express in a way that... It's, yeah, it's very comfortable. You can just make the diminuendos as long as you want. You can start. Yeah, but it's actually, I'm amazed just playing this, how close it is to other evocations of Pan, whether it be Debussy or Ravel. Could we also hear what the clarinet's playing? Because you have your own solo at the same time. I mean, there's seven solos playing simultaneously. Uh, and I'm interested to find out also whether the clarinet music sounds like clarinet music. <laughs> I think one thing we just heard was that you share a number of motifs together. Ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -ba, you know, for example, it's at the beginning of the flute melody and it's someplace in the middle of the clarinet melody. Yes, that, that's true. I, could I answer your question with another question? Please. Um, which is, did you think, listening to those two, that the main difference between those two solos was what's written or how we play the instruments? I thought the main difference was in the characteristics of the instrument. Yeah, so I think that the, the way, certainly as far as the music I just played was concerned, I think it, it brings out just the right responses. It's beautifully written for the instrument. I think as composition, the material that we've got is not dissimilar. As composition, the material is the same, actually. There's someplace a chart, you know, where he worked out all these motifs and then assigned, you know, the, assigned them to different instruments. So all seven of the instruments we hear playing at the beginning of the piece actually do have the same material, just scrambled in different orders. And when you put it together, it's a kind of, not chaos, but organized chaos. We only have the two of you, but it would be interesting, I think, to hear these two solos played together as they are in the piece.
was extremely interesting <laughs> because we played it together when we tried it through in rehearsal. We finished exactly together. That time, playing in a very similar way, we finished several seconds apart, uh, playing the same music. I also wonder whether, because we were being recorded just then, we were listening to each other more intently. And although it's written freely and we were playing soloistically, we were playing it rather like chamber music, so I might listen for the right moment to start a phrase yeah. after you've... Yeah. And, and it's funny how we managed to get one uh, note exactly together and then another unison happened exactly together again, although we're playing very freely. I'm interested, from the orchestral player's point of view, in whether playing a piece like this or the passages in the Fourth Symphony or other... You know, piano concerto also has this kind of thing. What sort of an adjustment it is? How how unusual it seems to, to suddenly be playing in this different way in an orchestra. I think that in the Fourth Symphony, where um, the passages are rather freely played, or rather look freely played on the page, they're not actually as free as they might appear, because uh, very often not only are they dictated by the conductor, but the speed that we have to play is written also. Um, so for some of that piece, we actually find ourselves writing it out in the part conventionally. Really? So, uh, f you know, for example, I've written in my part certain bar lines, 3, 8, 4, 4, 3, 8, because actually that's what the music does, um, although the pacing of it um, is very much for Essa Becker to decide. In this kind of music, we, we're like a texture, we're like a colour, so we... As you said, we can start, we can go back to the beginning again, and we're often cut off. Wait, but hang on, I haven't finished my phrase yet. <laughs> and it's not actually about where it finishes, it's about a texture with a, a lot of other people. Uh, although that's not unknown in the traditional repertoire. I mean, we were just talking about Daphnis and Chloe uh, before we began, before we turned on the camera. Yeah. And uh, of course, you have to play the notes that are written, but it's in order to make a texture at the beginning yeah. of the famous mm. second suite also. But, you know, as orchestral musicians, we spend our whole lives trying to stay together. And so I, I wonder if it isn't at first an adjustment, you know, for orchestral musicians to stay apart. <laughs> and especially for the strings who travel in herds, you know, and <laughs> never, never have had the experience practically to, 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 yeah. to act like soloists, unlike wind players. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, because when we generally play not together, we're very uncomfortable. That's what we spend our lives trying to do. And so the immediate reaction was when you're not playing together is that this isn't music. <laughs> um, so I think the initial reaction is very destabilizing and it takes a little time to get used to it's okay that things are not together and that we're going to start and finish and it's still serious music. Sam, you were talking earlier on about um, how certain phrases in this music might be reminiscent of music by other composers, partly because of the kind of flute writing. Can you find an example yeah. or two of, yes. of that? Well, I've actually been just re-studying some Boulez pieces, which I have to play later on, and it reminded me very much of the kind of bird-like motifs. Messiaen's music again is very much, the, very much these kind of things. Boulez, I've been playing Explosant Fix, and it's these kind of yes. very, very fast, nervous bird-like yes. well, it is, and it's yes, exactly and what think, we find. I think that's so, and this, for example, uh, in my part, uh, you could imagine Messiaen writing that with some of his, um, his, his bird calls. But uh, I certainly had the impression when we played together that it didn't sound like any of those composers who we were just talking about. Could we just do the first few phrases again together? Now, I don't know whether it's the way the parts coordinate or the harmonies that come out. I know it's just, just the two of us. But that seemed to me to sound like Dostoevsky, not anybody else. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Steve, why is that? It is partly the harmony. I mean, there's, a, there's secretly behind this music, there's a chord that it, it doesn't change. And you, um, you know, and your parts are essentially arpeggiating this chord. And so the notes sound like the right notes. Uh, and that's, that's how it's done.
if you'd like to try this for yourself, visit wovenwords.co.uk slash game. There we've set up a Lutislavsky-style composing problem that you can solve for yourself.